My name is Devinder Dillon. Um, I'm a pulmonary critical care specialist and I'm also director of medical ICU and uh, pulmonary and respiratory services. The difficult part of COVID patients in ICU is, you know, when they come to ICU, they stay in ICU for a very long time as opposed to our non-COVID patient whose average length of stay is about three to four days. These people can stay in ICU for at least 14 to 21 days. This population is very different from our regular garden variety ICU patients. For example, these patients need to be put on their bellies when they go on a ventilator. It takes about five to six nurses. So that just that one exercise takes about, I would say 15 to 30 minutes just for one patient. And they stay on their belly for a good 16 hours in a day, and then they go on their back for six hours. So it's a, it's a continuous process. And also, as you guys know, there is, a, there is a special requirement for these rooms to be negative pressure rooms. So they have to be kept closed. So in and out is always going to be an exercise. You have to put your gown on, the pepper mask on. If they are on a ventilator or if they're on a BiPAP, then we have to use pepper hoods. Hello, uh, my name is Anthony Tsang. I'm the Associate Medical Director of the Urgent Care Southern North in Yuba City. Uh, we have seen a lot of patients come in with respiratory symptoms and there has been a sudden rise in those cases. I'm concerned about those rise. On the average, our urgent care sees about 120 patients a day. And just yesterday, we saw 220 patients. And that's an unusual rise. We usually don't see this kind of rise until some days like after Thanksgiving or Black Friday on the holidays when people are home and there's flu cases. My name is Kamara Graham and I am an emergency medicine physician and I'm the director of the emergency department here at Rideout. We have seen a significant rise in the number of COVID patients we're seeing every day. We've also, therefore, most patients who are admitted to the hospital come through the emergency department. So we are seeing a large number. Many we are able to send home if they're doing well. However, we are seeing a significant increase in the amount of patients that require admission to the hospital. And so we are really concerned over the next several weeks um, about these numbers going up and us being able to also care for the strokes and the heart attacks and the other patients who also need our emergency department. So I'm Dr. Blair. I'm the, one of the family practice doctors at Southern North Medical Group. Um, I actually have the privilege of being the president and CEO of the group too. You need to make sure that you continue to pursue your preventative care during the course of the COVID virus. We've seen a 30% drop off in cancer and that's not because we've cured it, it's because we're not seeing it. Um, second thing is, we need to have people continue to catch up on their other vaccinations because the last thing we want at the end of this COVID virus is to get a vaccine and then find out that we have a measles outbreak, a whooping cough outbreak, or another version of an infectious disease outbreak coming back to, especially with our kids. 